but never got an answer and wondered if God was really there. Did you feel all hope was gone? But in his time he came along and answered the prayer you thought was gone. There is no prayer to song, for God hears them all. The answer may not be just what you Even when we think it's wrong Just remember there is no prayer too small I have read it for you We'll ask you shall receive No matter what it is I steal is just exactly what we need. There is no prayer to song, for God hears them all. The answer may not be just what you want, but He always knows what's right. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share something with you. And let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin, so you start trying to lift the lid, but the lid won't budge. You know why? Because the heavy dirt is preventing that lid from opening. So then you say to yourself, maybe, just maybe, I can... Uh, pound on the lid and unsettle the dirt and somebody might just hear me and if they do hear me maybe they also notice the dirt moving and start digging their way down towards me this is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction you know you need help you know you can't do it on your own but you don't know where to turn for help in reality there are probably people standing right nearby you just don't know that you just think you're going to die excuse me one second okay that's a little better Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you, my friend, have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind that maybe, just maybe by doing drugs and alcohol, especially alcohol excessively, drugs at all, that maybe you'll take away something that the Lord Jesus gave you, and that's called life. And you take that life away from you, snatch it away from you, and throw it away 
but more selfishly, you take that life away from the people that love and care for you most, your children, your grandchildren, husband, wife, mother, father. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be the person that, that I'm reading about on these index cards that waited and waited so long that it was too late. Instead, be the person that reaches out and says, Ralph, I need help. Ralph, I need help now. Call 844-405-HELP. Text me at 631-599-0218. And together, you and I can help you take back your life. Before your life is gone. People like Larry Geist from the Geist Academy. Over 30 years experience. He's a good friend of mine in addiction recovery. Coach your life coach. 516-458-2741. That's Larry Geist from the Geist Academy. He and I always tell people like you, it doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is that you're asking for help. Keep in mind, in conjunction with the Lord Jesus' help, Larry and I and many thousands of other coaches can work on setting up a recovery plan for you. But the most important thing is is two factors. The first one is, is to finally realize you have a problem. And when you have realized that, it is also very, very important that you reach to God and you just give a little prayer. And we're going to talk about prayer today. Give a little prayer and say, God, I have come to the end of my rope. I have now realized that I cannot do this on my own. I have realized that you, the Almighty God, is there to help. And if you truly start praying from your heart, those prayers will come answered. Call Larry at 516-458-2741 or go to www.odysseyconsultant.org. Let Larry Geis and myself help you take back your life. Folks, I always talk about in a lot of my videos about the fact that when I go to bed at night, I take my slippers off my feet, as most of us do, because we don't go to bed with our slippers on. So what I do is I push the slippers under the bed. And the reason for that is just because in the morning when I wake up, First of all, I have to praise God just under my breath and say, oh my God, another beautiful morning. But when I go to retrieve those slippers, underneath the bed, I have to go on my knees to, to, to go and get them. And while I'm on my knees, I thank God for his mercy upon all of us and for his love towards all, the, all of us. And if you do that each and every day, at night you push the slippers under, in the morning you pull them out while you're on your knees things in life will become clearer, things will go smoother, and things will become better. Now, a lot of you folks might say, well, what about prayer? Well, this is why we're going to talk about it. I have 10 prayer tips. How to talk to God. Prayer is simple, is simply having a conversation with the Almighty God. There are many different thoughts on what you should do and what you shouldn't say at a, uh, when you pray. There is merit to many of these different ideas, but try to make your prayer life a simple conversation with your Heavenly Father. Here are the 10 tips that I suggest. First is have a place to pray. And that's not to say that you can't pray anywhere, but have a, uh, a place that you want to call your prayer area, like in the morning when you retrieve your slippers, pray in front of your bed. You may have a quiet room in your house that you can pray, or you might find solace in your car in the parking lot at work. Wherever you pray, try to be consistent. It certainly doesn't matter to God if you lock yourself in the bathroom or in a broom closet, but it will help you to focus on your prayer time when you have a consistent time and place to pray. And this is why I suggest the slippers under the bed at night and in the morning when you retrieve those slippers, that could be the time to pray. Now, don't get that confused with praying at dinner and praying for breakfast and all that. I'm talking about a deep conversation with the Lord Jesus. Try to find a special place for that. Pray without ceasing means to always be an attitude of prayer or to be aware that God is with you at every moment and that you can have a conversation with Him at any time, any place. Number two, have time to pray. Schedule a time to pray. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. Uh, 1 uh, Thelonians 5.17. This means to always be in an attitude of prayer or to be aware that God is with you every moment that you can have a conversation with Him at any time. However, schedule a specific time to pray each day will help you become a consistent person of prayer. Consistent time a special time and a special place, like number one, a special room. 
someone who is serious about the needs of others will pray trusting that God will accomplish his plan in their life as I do for you. Number three is make a prayer list if that helps you. Create a list that you can carry with you in your prayer journal where you can note a specific prayer requests that people mention to you. When someone asks you to pray for them, write it down if you don't have a great memory like I do. Don't trust your memory all the time because as we get older, it becomes a little less uh, effective. You can divide your to, uh, list into two various types of requests or request, uh, create lists that you pray through various days of the week. You can divide it into any amount of different categories. Number four, use a prayer guide. A prayer guide is a short list of reminders of what types of things you should be praying for. Here are some suggested topics for your prayer guide. Salvation protection, leadership, ministry opportunity, deliverance from temptation, etc. Do you know what I mean? When you pray for a missionary, you should pray that God will give them the protection on the field, that they be able to witness effectively, and that they will have the ministry opportunities. When praying for your family, you can use the list to remind you to pray for their deliverance from temptation, safety, and that they make wise decisions and lead others. Number five, pray specifically. Pray for the request on your list and try to avoid general prayers. God already knows all about the missionaries in the world. Don't just pray for God to bless them all. Pray for the specific needs. Pray for your family members' individual request. Pray for your family in general. Number six, keep a notepad close to you. Have you ever been distracted while praying? It can happen, especially if you're in a public place, it can happen. But I try when I play, uh, pray is to concentrate on my personal relationship with God. It often happens when we are praying and remembering something important we need to do or even another prayer request will come to mind suddenly so you get sidetracked. Use a simple notepad to help you jot down new requests to do items and then get back to your conversation with the Lord Jesus. Number six, I believe it is, or is it seven? Number seven, keep a prayer journal. Along with your prayer list, you should keep a journal of things that you have prayed for in the past. Write down when you began praying for it and when God answered your prayers. We all had prayers answered, but can you name five specific things you prayed for and when God answered them? Try to remember that. If you don't have some time, uh, some type of prayer journal. You probably can't, but if you can, that's very impressive. But, but impressive. But keep a prayer journal. Uh, this is number seven. Number seven. Talk with God. Don't make prayer complicated, folks. There are certainly many things the Bible teaches about prayer. We should pray with respect. We should pray to a loving Father. We should pray with sins forgiven. We should pray in Jesus' name and according to His will. All of these things are taught in the Bible. Keep these things in mind while praying, but don't overcomplicate the prayer. Talk with God as you are having a conversation with a friend. Yes, He is the King of creation, but He is also a caring and loving Father. Number nine, pray out loud. God will hear you if you pray silently, but praying out loud helps you stay focused. When you pray out loud, you force yourself to think intelligently about your words. Praying silently is a quick way to zone out and lose focus and intensity in your prayer time. Number 10. Find a prayer partner. The majority of your daily prayers should be a personal time communion with God. However, it is also helpful to share requests with others who can carry a prayer burden with you. You can both rejoice over victories through prayer. The Bible even speaks about joining together with others in prayer. We can bring requests to God on an individual basis, but Jesus admonishes the disciples in Matthew 18, 19, and 20 that there is more power in ongoing to God as a group rather than individuals. I hope these 10 tips help you in your quest to pray more and more consistently. Having daily communication and communion with God is a great way to help you spiritually and become more mature within Christianity.
Let's just go over the 10 tips by title. Have a place to pray. Like I suggested in most of my videos, as I always suggest doing it the way I do, but it's not, it's not a, 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 any request, it's not mandatory, it's just a suggestion. I push my slippers under the bed because in the morning, before I want to walk on that cold, hard floor, I have to get on my knees and pull those slippers out, and while I'm on my knees, I will pray. I will pray. I call it pray via kneel mail, because you're kneeling to the Lord Jesus. Look at the Jack of this video and you'll see exactly what I mean about kneel mail. Number two, have time to pray. Schedule a time to pray. Again, this goes right back to number one for me, which is in the morning. However, you can make time any time of the day. God doesn't care what time you do it, but try to be consistent. Have a consistent area and a consistent time, and that way you don't forget um, um, those areas and those times, because if you do it sporadically, which most of us do anyway, but for your main prayer, do it more consistently at a certain place and a certain time. Make a prayer list. We all have to have a prayer list sometimes. Create a list that you carry in your prayer journal. There are going to be times where people uh, ask for you to give them a quick prayer. And honestly, you're not going to remember everything. Use a prayer guide. A prayer guide is a short list of reminders that uh, of what types of things you should pray for. Salvation, protection, leadership, ministry opportunity, deliverance from temptation, etc. Pray specifically. Pray for the requests on your list and try to avoid general prayers. God already knows of all the missionaries out there, so try to concentrate on more uh, 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 direct prayers. Keep a notepad close to you. Have you ever been distracted while praying? Sometimes it can happen, especially if you're praying during, it could be at McDonald's and just ready to sit down and have a meal. And if you start praying and thanking the Lord for that beautiful meal that he's supplying and then suddenly someone taps you on the shoulder of course and uh, wants to know can they have the ketchup this is what I mean so keep a notepad close to you so you don't have to memorize it keep a prayer journal along with your prayer list you should keep a journal of things that you have prayed for in the past write down when you began praying for it and when God answered those prayers I bet you if I asked you to give me your last five prayers with God answering five you won't be able to tell me unless you go to the journal. Talk with God. Don't make prayer complicated. Have a conversation like he was your personal friend. Although he is the king of kings, he is still a loving heavenly father. Pray out loud. Sometimes when you pray quietly, what happens is you get distracted, you lose control, uh, you lose the thought, what, whatever might be in your head. So if you pray out loud, it is something that you hear then, and then you'll be able to continue with your prayer and the thought. And last but not least is to find a prayer partner. The majority of your daily prayers should be personal time and community. Remember what Jesus uh, um, said uh, when he admonished the disciples. And he said that there is more power in going to God as a group rather than an individual. Turn to Matthew 18, 19, and 20. I really hope that these 10 tips help you. Uh, number one and two are so simple. It's have a place and a specific time every day. My place, my time is in the morning. And I push the slippers under the bed at night to, to climb into bed. And when I wake up in the morning, I have to retrieve those slippers. I pull them out. I drop to my knees because I call it kneel mail, not email, not telephone, kneel mail. And I thank the Lord for being a heavenly father to me for having mercy on me and to guiding me and directing me for a great day and I thank God for another day because a lot of people never had that opportunity the person I spoke about on these index cards in the beginning waited and waited and waited and that's why it's so important folks that you reach out if you need help it, there's no shame in depression there's no shame in low self-esteem there's no shame in addiction what is shameful is the fact that you don't reach out because if you don't reach out nobody's going to know you need help and believe me there are people like myself that are here waiting to help you all it is is for you to reach pick up the phone 844-405-HELP and I answer the phone and I said help take your life back today show how can I help you and then you and I just talk as we would as friends I don't judge uh, Larry Geis from the Geis Academy at 516-458-2741 he doesn't judge uh, most life coaches addiction recovery coaches are there as a crutch 
but neither Larry or I are the answer. The answer truly lies within the grace of God. It is your relationship with God that cements and binds together. And it is Larry and I and many other coaches, we act as the crutch. You lean, us, us, lean on us as you build that relationship with God. We give you the tools on how to work with your addiction, how to set up recovery, how to avoid depression, how to get past depression, low self-esteem. I am not a miracle worker, Larry isn't either, but the miracle here is, is that it is so simple to have that conversation with God and asking God to, to accept you as his, as his as a child, because that's exactly what you are. What you just need to do is to say, God, I ask you for forgiveness. I give my life to you. I need you to guide and direct me. Carrie Underwood sang it best in the in the uh, 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 song, Jesus Take the Wheel, because Jesus has to take the wheel in our lives daily. If you let the devil take the wheel of your life, your life will consist of addictions, depression, low self-esteem, uh, 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 gambling, uh, uh, sexual addictions. But if you let God take over, your life will start becoming joyous, almost like a flower that kind of wilted away in the dry sun when you accept Jesus the flower just starts blossoming and that's your life it's going to get better but it is a timing thing it's not a matter of the minute you ask God to, to help you that everything just gets perfect but God will direct you each and every day to make things easier and better but you need to drop to your knees in the morning if you can ask the God for guidance and directions ask God to, to, to help heal whatever addictions you have. Ask God to help heal your depression and your low self-esteem. Your relationship with God can only happen through you. And remember the power of prayer. It is the most powerful thing on the world. Prayers go answered. Maybe not immediately, but they go answered. But you have to believe that who you're praying to is listening to you you start doing that, everything else will happen for you. I hope to God that you all have the best day of your life. I hope to God that you have a sober rest of your life. I want to thank each and every one of you watching me all over the country, uh, in Europe and in Africa, for being such a dedicated uh, audience to me. And uh, starting tomorrow, we get back into more addiction issues. Uh, but I needed to touch base about uh, the, the, the uh, power of prayer and, and about my analogy about kneeling in the morning because uh, addictions and all that I do talk about are uh, um, the minor of my videos. The major is, is God because uh, I couldn't even live in recovery without God and I couldn't even live the life that I live without God. So uh, God is about 75% of, of my daily functions. Uh, I, I like to say it's 100%, but I, you know, I am only human. There are sometimes 25% I sometimes stray off to do other things and what I don't think about these. And, and as I grow within God, maybe it becomes 80, 85, 90%. Uh, I'd like to be at 100%, but again, um, we are all sheep. He's our shepherd, so we need to just follow. We need to follow his path. And when we do that, things will become better. I hope to God you guys all have a great day. And until next time, please call me at 844-405-HELP, and I promise I'll help you take back your life.
Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share something with you. And let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You try to get out of the coffin, but the enormous weight of the dirt upon the lid prevents you from opening the lid. You think you're going to die. But then, suddenly, you say, maybe if I bang on the lid, I'll unsettle the dirt that's upon the lid, and someone that's standing on top might start digging their way down to help me. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help. You know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn. In reality, there are people standing there waiting to help you. You just don't realize that. You just think, today, you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind that by doing drugs and alcohol, excessively doing drugs and alcohol, excessively drinking and doing drugs, even just doing drugs, not even excessively, that you might overdose? You will take something that was preciously given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ called life away from you. You will give up your own life for drugs and alcohol. And more selfishly, you will give up your life and take it from the people that love and care for you most. You people like children, grandchildren, husband and wife, mother or father. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be like the person I just read about that waited and waited consumed alcohol, consumed drugs, and waited, and waited to seek help, and then it was too late. Instead, be a person that reaches out to me, or to anyone, and says, hey, I can't do drugs and alcohol anymore. I am tired of waking up in the morning with a hangover. I am tired of not remembering what happened last night. I am tired of people being mad at me because of the things I do and say. Reach up to Jesus and say, God, let today be a new day. Let today be a day where you, God, take control of my life. Carrie Underwood said it best. Jesus, take the wheel and God will take the wheel of your life if you just accept him, and ask him, and live through him. Let God enter your heart. Let God control your life. Let God take the wheel of your life. You can also go to help by calling me at 844-405-HELP. You can text me at 631-599-0218. You can also email me at ralf at takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com. That's ralf at takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com. There are other people that can help you. It's not just me. People like Larry, guys from the Geist Academy, with over 30 years' experience doing exactly what I do. You can call me at 516-458-2741, 516-458-2741. Larry Geis and I always tell people like you, people like we were at one time. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is that you're here today putting your hand out, and we are going to extend our arm and take you and guide you and direct you. But without Jesus Christ in your life, without your higher power, no matter what I say or Larry say, is not going to be sufficient because in conjunction with your higher power and our guidance, your recovery, your new life, will intertwine and become whole. God, coaching, and your willingness in the middle come together and we become whole. That is your new life. Larry Geis from the Geis Academy, 516-458-2741. You can find him at www.odysseyconsultant.org. Folks, today, I want to talk about God builds your faith by giving you a dream. Now, glory be to God, who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of. Infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. Ephesians 3.20 if, if a dream comes from God, it will be so big in your life that you can't do it on your own. If you could do it on your own, you would need faith. 
Faith is like a muscle. It can be strengthened. It can be weak or it can be strong, depending on how much you use it. How does God build your faith, you might ask? He uses a very predictable pattern that we will look at um, in this particular video. And if you understand it, you can cooperate with developing greater faith on your own. It's like when a father seeking help from Jesus for his son said, have pity on us and help us if possible, if possibly can. If you possibly can is the key word. And God can. Mark 9.22. Remember this now. Have pity on us and help us if you possibly can. Jesus replied, What do you mean, if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. Mark 9.23. The first thing God does to build your faith is to give you a dream. He plants it within you while you're sleeping. When God wants to work in your life, he'll always give you a dream about yourself, about what he wants you to do, and how it's going to impact your life. There are many examples in the Bible of this. God gave Noah a dream of building an ark. God gave Abraham the dream of being father of a great nation. God gave Joseph the dream of being a leader that would save his people. God gave Nehemiah the dream of building the wall around Jerusalem. How do you know when a dream is from God or when it's just something that you thought of yourself? The Bible tells us that God, by his mighty power at work within us, is able to do far more than he would ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. Ephesians 3.20 In other words, if a dream comes from God, it will be so big in your life that you can't do it on your own. If you could do it on your own, you wouldn't need faith at all. And if you don't have faith, you're not pleasing God. Because the Bible says whatever is not of faith is sins. Romans 14, 23. God starts to build your faith by giving you a dream. He may be speaking to you right now as you're watching me. But you just don't recognize it for what it is. The dream you have, the idea, the concept... That thing you've been thinking about doing that would be real benefit to other people. Where do you think the idea came from? How do you think I became the host of this show? It was during my deepest, darkest moments in life. Well, I hit rock bottom and reached to God for help. Went to AA. Did not help me. So God gave me a thought, a planted a seed within me and says, go help other people while helping yourself. Hence, take your life back today show and all my different websites. God will never tell you to do something that contradicts his truth. In other words, he won't give you a dream of leaving your family and kids and moving to Hollywood to do a movie star. If you've got a dream, then you can know it is not from God. If you've got that dream about becoming a Hollywood movie star, it didn't come from God. God starts with a dream as he works within your life to build faith. For an example, let me read this to you. This is an interview with God. It's a hypothetical, sure. But if I was going to interview God, this is what it would sound like titled The Interview with God. I dreamed I had an interview with God. Come in, God said. You would like to interview me, he asked. If you have the time, I replied. God smiled and said, My time is eternity, and it is enough to do everything. What questions do you have in mind to ask me? What surprises you most about mankind, I asked. God answered that they get bored of being children, are in the rush to grow up, and then long to be children again. That they lose their health to make money, and lose their money to restore their health. That by thinking anxiously about the future, they forget about the present. Such 
that they live neither for the present nor for the future, that they live as if they will never die, and that they die as they never lived. God's hand took mine, and we were silent for a while, and I asked, as a parent, what are some of the life's lessons you want your children to learn? God replied with a smile again, to learn that they cannot make anyone love them. What they can do is to let themselves be loved. To learn that what is most valuable in not what they have in their lives, but who they have in their lives. To learn that it is not good to compare themselves to others. All will be judged individually on their own merits, not as a group on a comparison basis. To learn that a rich person is not the one who has the most, but is the one who needs the least. To learn that it only takes a few seconds to open profound wounds in the persons we love, and it takes many years to heal those wounds. To learn to forgive by practicing forgiveness. To learn that there are persons that love them dearly but simply do not know how to express their, or show their feelings. To learn that money can buy everything but happiness. To learn that two people can look at the same thing and see things totally different. To learn that a true fan, friend is someone who knows everything about them and likes them every anyway. To learn that it is not always enough that they be forgiven by others, but that they have to forgive themselves. I sat there for a while, enjoying the moment. I thanked him for his time and for all that he has done for me and my family and for humanity. And he replied, Any time. I am here 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All you have to do is ask. And my son... I promise I will answer. All you have to do is ask God. He will answer. All you have to do is ask God and He will answer. Friends, I spoke about how when you go to bed at night and you take your slippers off, push it underneath, push them underneath your bed in the morning to retrieve your slippers. You will be forced to go on your knees, and while on your knees, give the Lord Jesus a prayer. Say, God, thank you for another day. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for my audience. I want to thank you for this special mes message that you were able to uh, let me allow, uh, allow me to give to my audience. Heavenly Father, I ask that you help each and every one in my audience bless each and every one touch each and every one for the ones that have doubt in you show them that you are the way you are the truth and you are the life heavenly god i ask you to protect watch over my mother have my mother see how many people love her Heavenly Father, I ask all this in your name. Amen. Folks, simple prayer. A simple prayer. It doesn't have to be fancy words. A prayer of thanks to the Holy God and for guidance and direction for the days to come is what you need to do daily. For without it, life can be challenging. Life will be challenging. And when you get dreams at night, know that if they're constructive dreams, that probably, most likely, God planted them in you. Let today be the first day of your new life. Give me a call at 844-405-HELP. Text me at 631-599-0218. And let today be the day of your rebirth. Come born again, reach to Jesus Christ and say, God, I've had enough. I need your help. I need your help now. You don't need to call 911 on the phone for God for help. You just need to close your eyes, pray, 
and speak from your heart. May God bless you.
Exactly what we need. 